Hey, what's going on guys? It's White Gaming back again with some more Icarus. And today we have a letter from the dev team with all the information about Beta Weekend 6. Holy crap, this one looks brilliant. There are some pretty cool screenshots in here as well. Um, it looks like artwork, so that's pretty cool. We've got some exciting stuff. Now, if you don't know, Beta Weekend 6 is all about m faction missions. There are six missions in total, and it, this time around, we will not have any progress. Everything is from the start to see how far we can get in the time we've got. This Beta Weekend starts on Friday the 5th of November at 5 p.m. PDT. Once again, that's about 1 a.m. if you're in the UK and ends on Sunday the 7th of November at 10 p.m., which is around about 4 or 5 a.m. Monday morning or something like that, I think, if I remember rightly. Um, well, no, it won't be 4 or 5 a.m., will it, if you do the maths? Never mind, my maths is terrible. Now, I'm White Gaming. If you're a fan of all things survival, especially Icarus, subscribe to the channel because we'll be covering the game here in full. And I mean in full. Every little bit about this game... As soon as it launches, we are going to be all over it, and I am excited for that. It is not long to go now. It is, what, four weeks, five weeks, roughly? So, we're getting close. Now, first things first, we have this awesome piece of artwork. That is absolutely amazing. There is, like, nothing on it either. There's nothing written about what it is or where it is, but I love it. It's so, so cool. Uh, I, I don't know why I love it so much. I just think it, that looks absolutely amazing. So whoever has done that, hats off. Well done. That is fucking cool, dude. So we've got six missions, 53 hours, and we'll be starting from zero. Beta Weekend 6 brings our biggest test yet, the faction mission system. While only providing a taster of the range of missions in the game, you'll complete six missions with brand new characters as we have wiped your characters from Beta Weekend 5 so we can see how you progress. Using an experienced leveled up character would, was not going to give us accurate data or insight as to how players progress through missions. The missions are assigned to you by various factions, organizations vying for control and riches around Icarus. See below to learn more about them. So the six missions we've got are Beachhead, Livewire, Dark Harvest, Field Test, Kill List, and Headstone. Pretty damn cool. The first mission briefing for Beachhead is UDA, mandated first drop for new prospectors. New arrivals to Icarus must demonstrate basic survival skill in this well-explored temperate, temperate region if they wish to retain their prospecting license. Prospectors are not expected to fill any specific ex objectives beyond staying alive for an acceptable length of time. No further tasking will occur until basic competency is attained. Failures will not be recovered. Terms, the new arrivals will be provided with a functioning Enviro suit and basic crafting information. They will be otherwise unassisted. We've got some cool screenshots here as well. That's, uh, that's cool. I don't know what happened there, but some some poor dude must be really upset. Why is there, like, water jets? What's that about? Strange. So this will be the first beta weekend where we really start to show you what session-based survival feels like to play. While your first mission will get you, will help you get your bearings, we want to ensure you're a bit more comfortable with life on Icarus before ramping up the challenge. This could be in form of missions with tougher objectives, half sure environments to survive, or in a very short drop window in which to complete them. So there's a little bit of a Q&A as well for Weekend 6. Um, a lot of people, especially if you're in the Discord, a lot of people like to ask a lot of questions in there. So if you're not in the Discord, go join it. The links for the, all of Icarus's socials and mine are in the description down below. Make sure you check out the Icarus ones, especially the Discord, because there's a lot of helpful stuff in there. If, you really, if you're struggling with it or you're new to it, a lot of helpful stuff. And if you've got any questions, if I can help, drop them down in the comments. If I can help you, I will. Uh, I'll be happy to help. I'm loving the game so far. I've learned quite a bit about it, so hopefully uh, hopefully, I will be able to help a few people out. The Weekend 6 Q&A, and we do realize that you have a few questions with the character wipe, multiple missions, and more. Will there be a level cap for the weekend? While you might be starting new characters, the level cap once again will be 30. Tier 4 will still be locked on the planetary tech tree. The changes to the number of blueprint and talent points... Uh, there's no changes been made, and we have a new chance to build characters how we wish, which is good. I like that there's no changes made there. I feel like the amount of talent points and blueprint points that we get 
I think that's a good amount. I think they've got it pretty damn well there. We're not getting too many, but see, I didn't feel like I had loads to spare, but at the same time, I wasn't struggling with them. It was it was good enough to make me think about where I was putting those points, but at the same time, I wasn't having to be really stingy, which I, I like that. That's, that's good. I don't like to be forced to pick, to say, you know, bow skills over over other stuff because the the points are so low so it was quite nice it was it, it's a good level hopefully they they keep it out of that <clears throat> so the play area for the weekend with multiple missions and prospects comes multiple variations of the map we made some small tweaks to how you can interact with the in-game map and there is now a basic system in place for tracing discovered areas and identifying out of bounds areas specific to the beta weekends Okay, so does that mean the system specific to the beta weekends? I'm assuming it does, uh, because we should. I think we can go pretty much everywhere on full launch. Uh, how that will work, I don't know. Ho hopefully, we'll find out a little bit more about that soon. But the mission system is designed to be followed in order. However, we understand there are situations where you don't want to wait for a friend to catch up, so we've made some allowances for this. The gate in your encounter is only applicable when starting a prospect, meaning you only need one member of your crew to have the necessary qualifications to begin. From there, anyone can join that prospect regardless of their status and will be credited with the completion when the mission is finished. Nice. There's not an extra day, so I love that. Will there be an extra day? No, unfortunately not. We've just got the same amount this one. Uh, this time there is no extra day. Well, the last two beta weekends, for different reasons, this weekend will be the standard 53-hour window. Enjoy it while it lasts. Okay. So, will there be new wildlife or biomes? Giving this away wouldn't be fun, would it? Bang. Yes, we're getting something new. There's going to be another alien. We saw the worm in the desert biome. Guarantee we're going to see something new in this one. I really hope, anyway. We'll see. We'll see. I, I reckon we will. And then we have this funky ass picture, which is really cool. The UDA Icarus First Cohort Operations Plan Survey Mission Desert. That's really cool. I like that. So I'm guessing that's giving us like a rough area of where we need to be and all, all that kind of stuff. Class 2 Younger Legos Unit SPM for Okay, okay. I like that. The little dossier that we're going to get. Hopefully, we do get those for missions. Little like briefing pack that we can go through, or something that's in the actual dropship. I think that'd be really cool. I, I wouldn't really do much, but it'd just be a nice little feature, just something to look at. The UDA United Development Agency, a puppet with power, formed in the aftermath of climate emergency. The UDA's a the UDA brought humanity together in a pursuit of a single extraordinary goal: terraforming a planet beyond our solar system. Then the dream collapsed and disharmony and factionalism began to tear the fabric of the organization. Now it governs Icarus afar via the Lagos group. In reality, the UDA is a vehicle of the new powers, a way to maintain each, each faction's post-crisis ascendancy while pursuing their individual agendas on Icarus. If, the truth, if there is truth to its appearance of power, it lies in the UDA providing a shield of legitimacy to faction activities than enabling them to exclude other aspiring power players. Oh, the Sontai, the China Space Agency. Somebody has to run space. The Sinotai is China's National Space Agency, ranking second only to the UDA as an off-world political force. Driven by the desire for power, prestige, and innovation to even deepen and extend its reach, Sinotai is one of the extraordinary success stories of the 22nd century. Attacking ambitious off-world goals from an effective zero point, the agency proved its mettle in the mid-21st century by putting the first humans on Mars, establishing Mars's Mars first gigawatt power system and the first off-world fuel refinery, and many other first leaps. Sinotai was a key player in the attempt to terraform Icarus, and there are a few space-going organizations that do not rely on its power capabilities to some extent. A common joke is how it is impossible to do anything sp in space without them. A common complaint suggests this is exactly their strategy. Well, of course, it's China, right? They, 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 do, they do it all, yeah. Next up, we have the ACS, the American Coastal States. Paranoia lingers at the borders. 
After the slow burn in mid 21st century collapse of the United States into separate federations, the American coastal states or the coasts abandoned most of the country's central states to form a new true blue union. Half a century later, the ACS regards itself as a beacon of freedom and liberal values, or spending more on surveillance and military R&D than any of the new powers combined. Propelled by a curious combination of enlightenment, censorship and fear, the ACS have approached Icarus in the same conflicted spirit, intrepid yet mistrustful. The ACS remains a contradiction, described by the Arkansas Defense League as a noose around the heartland whilst others see it as a bastion of determined sanity against medieval ambitions. By far the wealthiest of the ex-US federations with deep connections to Larkwell Martinez, the ACS is the only North American presence on the planet. The Anu... Anu I? I don't know how to say that word. I may be, I may be butchering it. The South American Union win at all costs. Established in the late 21st century, the South American Union commonly known as the UNI or the Unity. Ah, yes, the Unity. There we go. We like that. We'll use that one. Gained immense off-world power from being at the site of Earth's first space elevator. This influence accrued most clearly in Brazil, which was not slow to exploit it, gatekeeping access to the solar system and now the galaxy. As a result, the Unity have grown extremely rapidly, gaining an overdeveloped sense of their own abilities and importance. Beneath their confidence, however, they are desperate to maintain their advantage and see Icarus as a critical beachhead for their Federation's goals. Allied with off-world mining groups like Anaris, it is clear that the Unity has high ambitions for Icarus and the exotics beneath its surface. So, we've got three more here. The Assembly. The African Assembly. Keep out of our way. The African Assembly is swift, swiftly rising force in Earth politics encompassing a majority of the states of the sub-Saharan Africa, a product of war and desperation rising from the ashes of the continental strife. The Academy's climb to, the Assembly's climb to power has been astonishingly swift, harnessing its huge potential to transform a continent in just a few decades. Its advancement on Icarus in the aftermath of terraforming's collapse has been equally rapid but it has been slow to shake old attitudes after centuries of exploitation, its leadership still harbors hospitality towards any outside influence, viewing groups like the Sonotai with great suspicion. The Assembly's seat at the table is new, their confidence is fragile, and they wish to maintain their growth, and they will ensure it by whatever means they deem necessary. Next up is the Lagos unit, the UDA. It's our planet, and you're just visiting. The sub-branch of the UDA, tasked with overseeing Icarus, the Lagos unit, was formed during an emergency summit in Nigeria's capital. Based in orbit around Icarus itself, far from the eyes of Earth's media, it has one goal. Control of the planet and the flow of exotics. Due to its distance from Earth and conflicts between the new powers, who theoretically direct the Lagos unit through the UDA, it can be difficult at times to know exactly whose interests the Lagos unit is serving. It has several sub-branches, including Group 15. And the next one is Group 15. Group 15's exact role, ro exact role and remit remains stubbornly ill-defined. A sub-branch of the Lagos unit, known for mercenary behavior, dirty tracks, and questionable tactics during the convert operations. It has also been responsible for conducting some of the most advanced research and studies into Icarus itself. The group is exceedingly pragmatic, often contracting prospectors to perform its most dangerous tasks, as well as importing skills from Earth as needed. As an organization, they embody a single idea. The ends justify the means when humanity's future is at stake. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. I get that. Mars. Administration Authority. The Administration. It's our time. The Mars Administration Authority has often been referred to as simply the as it Administration. It remains a minor player in the Icarus political landscape, but the promise of exotics and the extraordinary opportunities for development they seem to offer has not escaped the attention of this fledging colony. Eager to grow and restless under UDA rule, the administration is beginning to explore its options on Icarus. So that was actually really cool. I like that a lot. Um, just how we've learned a little bit about the factions that are controlling Icarus and that are actually working around it and what their end goals are, what they're working towards. I think that's really cool that they've added that in there. Uh, I wasn't expecting to see that. So that's nice. I think I'm going to do a bit of a separate video on 
the factions and all that kind of stuff later down the line when i know a little bit more about them we get to see a few players if we do i'm hoping we get to see cutscenes and all that kind of stuff as well that would be really cool whether we do or not don't know that's something we'll find out later on now as you can see in the background we've got some funky ass artwork i don't know who does this artwork but it is absolutely stunning it's really cool i love that flower whatever it is but it does look like it will kill you very quickly too nah you never know. It's Icarus, right? Everything's going to kill us on Icarus. Maybe that's the new thing they're talking about. The thing they won't tell us about. Hmm. Curious. Curious. There is also a whole heap of bug fixes as well for this update, which is pretty damn cool. Um, I like that they're, they're the way that they've done this, I think, is really smart. Hopefully it pays off and we do get a really, really good game off the bat. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, that is it from me. I have been wired. You have been awesome. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.